right let's do a plant tour shall we i'm going to show you all my living room plants today i'll do the bedroom a different day because it's just too many the total number of plants here is over 100 i haven't counted in some time and i've had a bit of plant mill since so i'm not really sure <laughs> i've had a couple of casualties too so who knows what the true number is but i'll show the living room plants today and then i'll just do the bedroom a different day okay so we're gonna start in i think we're gonna start in this corner here okay so the first plant in this corner is my hoya curtisii this is a really cute little easy care hoya i didn't know how to take care of them i just thought it would be easy um you know an easy one to start with so i just keep it in the window right here where it can get you know maximum sunlight i just figure with hoya the more light the better this is a south window so Everything that's here is getting very bright light. And then the next thing in this corner is my Monstera Thai Constellation. This is the newest leaf. I actually have this one just crawling in the pot. It's not supported on a pole or anything. Probably something I should change soon. I don't I haven't really decided what I want to do with this one like do I want to put it on a moss pole if I do I'm running out of time I think I should do it soon so it grows the way I want it to at the same time I just there's something I like about seeing a big crawling Thai constellation just like looking at me I just think it looks almost too good to be true it's gorgeous so yeah Thai constellation this plant I find to be super easy to be honest I just as long as it gets maximum light and I just keep watering it whenever I don't see condensation on the sides anymore. To be honest, it could probably do with a bit more water than I typically give it. Because this window is so hot and, you know, so bright, I could probably get away with watering it every other day and it still would be fine, wouldn't rot. Mm. The next plant is this sad, sad, sad little alocasia zebrina i have in the corner I, like <laughs> this plant is super neglected i'm sorry i don't know it looks terrible hopefully i will get around to paying it more attention and helping it grow better but it you know it's fine it probably had some spider mites at some point and i just started ignoring it and now it's just it just looks weird this is not actually a difficult plant to grow, so I don't really know what's happening with this one. Um, probably something I need to reconsider. I'm thinking I need to decide if I really want to own this Zabrina or not, but it's here for now. And then next I have, this is an Alocasia Dark Star. This, this I bought to replace an Alocasia Sumo that I had. It was huge. And it got some weird kind of fungal thing. And after like, you know, two and a half, almost three years, it perished. So I had to get a new one. I got this because I know this grows huge. And also because this window here gets super hot. So I thought it would be nice to have something that can really take that level of, of heat that's not a cactus. But unfortunately, since I've had this plant, it has had spider mites, I think, 10 times. Like literally every time I look at it, it has spider mites. I'm not sure if it has spider mites right now. I don't think so because I've treated it, but with this guy, you never know. I feel like the mites are just always lurking, you know? They're just always waiting to make a reappearance. Anyway, it's really gorgeous, right? These like deep, <laughs> dark red stems are amazing, especially against this, you know, this light greenery. And it's very, very sturdy, super easy at Lucasia. It does need constant watering. I wonder if that's the reason for all the spider mites. I feel like thirstier alocasias are more prone to spider mites, actually. So uh, maybe that's the case with this one. I'm not too sure. I'm going to see how it does. I'm going to monitor it and see if there's a place for it in my jungle. Because if it keeps getting spider mites at the same rate, I am going to excuse it from my apartment. And maybe put it in the building's lobby or something. Someplace where it can thrive and you know have all the spider mites at once without um without any care in the world next on the list is this is my epi elbow 
or as I like to call it, Epi Not So Albo. I got this a while ago. It took me ages to put it on a moss pole. I don't know why, but the second I put it on the pole, it just, you know, it climbed up with a quickness. One thing, I have a lot of plants on moss poles, but I feel like this one has probably attached more easily than any other plant I know. Like it's just desperate to be on, on the pole. If you look at the if you look at the adventitious roots, you can see that it just, it's really happy to grab onto the pole. You don't even have to keep the pole moist and it will still stay attached. It's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty tough and easy going of a plant. So we'll see how it progresses. I actually recently got an Epi marble in the mail. It just arrived and it needs to be potted up. It's actually... Wow, it's dry already. It seems to be, just like the other one, quite thirsty. I'm going to pot this up later today. My intention is to plop it in the window right next to this guy. So, you know, two epis growing side by side. One marble, one elbow. This one looks like it's going to have some really good color on it. So I'll keep you posted on how this progresses. <laughs> and then this is the big guy my philodendron billetier billy came in a teeny weeny cutting when i got her but honestly she is an absolute unit a beast and she is so so easy to care for you know she's reached the top of the pole actually so i need to extend this moss pole it does look a little bit sparse so i've been wondering whether i should consider just chopping it and you know repotting a second vine down below instead of extending but we'll see i'll see how it goes because there is a lot of foliage in that corner it's quite busy so maybe maybe i don't need it to be the bushiest plant out there but anyway this is this is philodendron billetier This is philodendron prince of orange honestly this this is a ridiculous plant it was tiny like a four incher when i bought it i got it in my early days of plant collecting i got it from gabriella plants and mm, it has been with me ever since just really super easy going to be honest i only not that long ago i gave it some support just it was so big that it was flopping over and I kind of didn't know what else to do with it. So the support has helped to train it to grow upright instead of just flopping over. I don't, you know, I don't have space for all that. It also has um, its first flowers. It's got a couple of flowers going at the moment, which, you know, I left the flowers on there because it's interesting to look at. But yeah, there's not too much to say about this guy, honestly. This plant is so easy. I think it should be in every beginner's list of possible plants to start with because it's easily, probably the easiest thing I've ever grown. It just raises itself. It takes a lot for it to deteriorate. I once went almost a month without watering it. It was fine. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just so, so vigorous and so strong. So I highly recommend it. It never has passed. It's just... It just chills it just does its thing it's it's great it's a great option my prince of orange i love it and then this is my alocasia sinuata i think also called quilted dreams maybe which you know is self-explanatory because look at that foliage right this is you know a while ago, most of my alocasias got some weird kind of, most of my small alocasias got some weird kind of fungal thing and a lot of them perished. I don't know what happened. I suspect it was something in the potting mix I used to pot them up, but I had a ton of problems. A lot of them perished. I saved some corms and replanted, but then just thought like, you know, how many? I just didn't end up keeping a bunch of them. So, but I kept this one and look at it. It's rock solid quite an easy easy alocasia and it's really underrated i think it's so cute i think i 
this one did go this one did get infected and i think it did go down to like one corm but it has since regrown all this foliage and i think it's only been a few months so super easy going and then of course next we have the big guy over over there Alocasia regal shields, but it's still heavy from a watering and I really, I really don't want to have to carry it, you know, multiple times. This is actually one of my favorite giant alocasias, just because I think those big, dark, velvety-ish, they look velvety, they're not really, but they look velvety. Those big velvety leaves are just stunning, especially as it gets bigger. This one is just coming out of dormancy. I'm not sure why, because it's February, <laughs> but for whatever reason, this plant seems to think it's spring and it's coming out of dormancy. This is one of my alocasias that definitely goes dormant every winter, no matter what, which is interesting because some of them do and some of them don't seem to care. This one cares. It's not a fussy plant, but it does go dormant for me every, every winter. Anyway, here it is. This is one where I definitely do keep it in its plastic nursery pot and I leave the nursery pot in the big, you know, in my big decorative pot because even though I really like the decorative pot, I wouldn't, it's made of terracotta, I wouldn't put it straight in there but also, like, this thing needs watering so much and the, you know, it's already so heavy and it's just in plastic so I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like if it was in ceramic or terracotta I'm sure at some point it will have to become a floor plant and I'll cross that bridge when I get there. <laughs> but anyway, that's this corner done. So let's move on to the window where I have, I mean, I have not many. I have, I used to have a lot more plants on the window, but as they've gotten bigger, I've kind of moved them to different locations around the apartment. So I have two plants on the window. So first up, First up is this really, really pretty, some people call it string of coins, some people call it, the, I call it the Dollar Tree Vine, the scientific name is Xerosicius Dangui. This, <laughs> this grew from something tiny to this massive thing. It's struggling a little bit this winter, I won't lie, because it's dry. It, this is one, this is a plant that does actually prefer more moisture than it's getting right now and um, I get best results with it when I water it a lot and when a lot I mean like every other day but I think really the true root of the matter is that I, I do need to repot it I'm nervous because I've never repotted it in all the time that I've owned it but I'm sure if I repotted it it would grow it would explode in growth number two I used to have it with just all the vines hanging down and they basically hanging right over the radiator as the vines have gotten longer and it's gotten a lot colder and we've had to turn the heater to more extreme levels. It's been too hot for some parts of the vine. So I've had this which dried out and this end which dried out, which I'll have to chop off, but the rest of it is fine. Still growing, still doing beautifully. I just put these two, <laughs> I just put these two sticks in my approximation of a trellis not really. Um, I think I probably should just repot it and then decide how I want to, how I want the vines to grow. It's probably not feasible for them to just keep hanging down. I probably should either get a real trellis or wrap them around this at the very least, but I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. That's probably for a different video. And then I have the only cactus in this house, which honestly, it's a weird one. I, this, it just wants to grow like, it just wants to lie flat. No matter what I do, it just wants to lie flat. So I think it, maybe it's one of those cacti that's supposed to grow horizontally by nature, you know. But I haven't, <laughs> I haven't figured out how to make that happen. I also kind of would prefer for it to stand up. I don't really have the space for a horizontal cactus. Anyway, the story behind this cactus is 
my husband bought some shoes from a local boutique and they were giving out these tiny, tiny little baby cacti to all the customers. So they gave him, it was this tiny and he brought it home and I'd never looked after a cactus. I didn't know what to do with it. I just shoved it in the window and I think I water this more than people say you should water it. Like I think I water this quite a bit, but again, the window is hot. It dries out quickly. So I don't see why it can't drink once it's dry. Anyway. That's what I do for this cactus and it is massive. <laughs> it's massive. I don't really know how to pot it. If anyone has any ideas, please tell me. I'm not sure what where we go from here, but um, here's my cactus. And we move over to this corner right here, which is probably the sunniest corner in the whole apartment. So the sun from this window. This is a south window and we are, you know, several floors up. So there are no trees obstructing. It is full on. This corner gets pretty hot. So I try to grow things that are native to equatorial countries, you know, places where it's hot, hot, hot. And so the plants can take that level of heat. So obviously the cactus is here in the window. And as it gets bigger, it's probably going to end up on the floor there somewhere. So it's a full little corner over there. Um, we have every year <laughs> the plants get bigger and bigger and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them or if they're going to stay there long term. But for now, that's where they are for now. Let's have a look. The first plant in this corner is this tabletop daffodil or narcissus which honestly has long outgrown this pot is starved for water i need to repot it and then i've got this succulent it's a kalanchoe the scientific name is kalanchoe beharensis but it is soft literally feels like felt it's, it's called the felt leaf plant again one that i got i think i got this at union square market maybe i don't know i got it when i thought to myself oh i have no succulents let me try a couple so i got like two succulents and this was one of them again i don't i'm not really a succulent expert to be fair i just keep it right by the window i my understanding is the succulents like a lot of light so I just keep it right by the window and to be honest again with how hot and um, with how hot and bright it is here, they do want, it does need water, more water than maybe the books would have you think. So I have, once I started watering it a bit more, like initially I was just like letting it dry out till it, till it got floppy. But for me, everybody is different, but for me, it seems to be better if I just water it more. So water it before it gets to that point of extreme floppiness. So that's what I started doing and immediately it perked up and started thriving. So, so far so good. Kalanchoe beharensis. Okay, and then right next to it is another succulent, Kalanchoe lucy, luciae or paddle leaf plant, Kalanchoe flapjacks. This one, again, similar to the other one, at first I wasn't watering it enough and it really, it suffered <laughs> because it shriveled up and dried. So I upped the water a little bit more and boom, Bob's your uncle. It's actually gone a little bit excessive in this pot. So I don't know. I think it's all right. It looks fine. It's cute, right? I like this plant a lot. Doesn't need water, doing okay. So yeah, this is my Kalanchoe Flapjacks. And then this one is one of three ficuses that I have in the house. What's the name again? F ficus Bengal Bengalensis? Whatever. Anyway, it's a rubber tree, a burgundy rubber tree. This was actually dormant for most of winter. It's just come out of dormancy. And I had a really, really good tip from Plant Boy NG, because he is based in Nigeria. A lot of ficuses are native to Nigeria. And he told me that these 
stay dormant if you if they don't feel rain on their leaves so i started showering it instead of just watering the soil more and it it, it re it brought it out of dormancy immediately it reboosted its growth obviously it's actually sunnier for longer now as well so it is a good time for it to come back but yeah this is this is my little rubber tree I'm not really, to be honest, much of a ficus person. I don't know why I have three of them, but it just happens like that sometimes. And then down here, this is my Thomatophyllum sprucianum or Philodendron goeldi, depending on who you ask. The I just watered it and it's in a terracotta pot. It's too heavy to lift. This is an example of why I usually don't pot in terracotta. I just... The idea of lifting all these heavy things is just not for me, but I, it so happens that this one is in the terracotta, so I'm just gonna leave it. This is it. This is my Hoya obovata, another plant that I don't really want to lift because it's on a bit of an unsteady trellis and it's quite heavy. So I'm just gonna leave it there, but it's doing really well. I mean, I, it's got lots of new growth, lots of new growth popping up everywhere, all over the plant. I think it's got some peduncles somewhere, but you know, I'm just going to pretend I don't see them. I feel like my obovata always has peduncles and they just don't amount to anything. So I'm just going to pretend I don't see the peduncles on this one. And then behind it is my OG snake plant, which... It's kind of obscured by the Hoya right now. You know, it's in a plastic pot and then um, the plastic nursery pot is in that giant pot, but it's huge, a massive plant. So I'm, I just leave it there. This snake plant thrives in all the light from the south window. Again, snake plants are also native to Nigeria. So it does well in this corner, which I think I try to keep plants here that like that hot, 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 sunny weather. Um, and they seem to do well, they seem to do well together. And then this is my pride and joy, <laughs> or one of them anyway. I'm not gonna pull this plant out. Anybody who has one knows why I'm not gonna pull it out because when you touch them, the leaves drop off and I can't be doing with that. This is my burrow's tail. I recently repotted it and lost basically half the plant to the process, so. It seems to be regrowing those bits quite well. Like if you look closely, you see these tiny shoots, which basically um, are offshoots from where, where the plant got split, you know, where it broke off, ends broke off it and triggered new growth points. So honestly, I'm guessing that in a few months from now, it will be quite an impressive looking specimen if I can stay on top of watering. I will say, I have no intention of ever watering that plant again. It's just going to be in that pot forever. So, yeah, that's my intention. And then over here we have dwarf samurai snake plant. This is this is the such a cute plant to me. I mean, again, this is one that I wasn't watering properly for the longest time. I was treating it, I don't know what, what I thought it needed, but I was letting it dry out. But then, you know, it would stay dry for months on end and nothing, it wouldn't deteriorate, but it just wouldn't grow. So this bit where this, it was like, this was all that was on top of it for years. And then when I finally, when it finally clicked and I started watering it more, it, you know, this leaf grew, it put out this one, it's put, it, this growth that I've had from it, I think has been in the last few months. It's grown more in six months than it has in three years. This one, on the other hand, the Sansevieria starfish snake plant. This one, on the other hand, I watered properly from the start. And I've actually had this plant for years now, and it started off as a very small, I think maybe this over here. I think this is the original plant, but it was super small when I got it. And now it has a million and one pups. Uh, at my next repot, I might separate. I'm not sure. <laughs> I might separate or I might just keep the whole family together 
it can't be easy for them all to get all the nutrients they need while they're all packed in together so i try to fertilize this um i try to stay on top of fertilizer and water because there are quite a few plants packed in here but yeah this is super cute no obviously this is the epi elbow i showed you just waiting here to be potted up because i just got it along with it came this tiny little watsoniana white stripes so i basically recently ordered plants from the great escape i heard from another plant youtuber that they had alocasia watsoniana so when i placed my order i accidentally ordered this which is which they class on their website as watsoniana dark form so i ordered basically the wrong one by accident super cute though so I'm, I'm i'm very happy to have it but then when i realized my error i went back and i bought the white one the one with the white stripes so there's a significant size difference at the moment and you know these are <laughs> these are young alocasia so we'll see how they do i do have them just out in my living room in open space right now i'm kind of contemplating putting them in my my grow tent i have a small grow tent it's just because when alocasias are this small they can be a little tricky and i really want these guys to thrive they are they grow big so they're gonna have to live out here no matter what but i'm thinking about it i'm gonna see how they do this one looks okay at the moment so i might leave this one here this one i don't know but i'm gonna pot it up let's see let's see how it does let's see if it thrives or if it's too sunny for it here if i need to you know if i need to think of a new game plan and then from the same order when i got the watsoniana this is alocasia this is a baby alocasia scalprum so cute right i've wanted a scalprum for the longest time so when i saw this one i jumped at it i'm actually surprised by how they look when they're babies i mean most alocasia just kind of a lot of them look exactly the same when they're little i can't wait till it gets bigger and you know scalprum esque i'm super excited because i've been dreaming of adding this plant to my collection for a long time it's not rare but it can be quite difficult to find for whatever reason but the texture when it gets bigger look at this texture right stunning so i'm glad i have it i hope i can i hope i can help it thrive alocasia can be funny i mean i know how to grow them but you know when they're tiny like this it can be six of one half a dozen of the other so we'll, we'll see how it does if it starts to go downhill or if it's struggling i'll put it in the grow tent i do find that like when alocasia is a baby like babies like this the extra humidity boost can really help them you know get stronger and get their act together so maybe i will put it back in maybe i'll put it in the grow tent to just kind of you know get a bit bigger and throw some more leaves and acclimate there's not much space in the tent though so i'm trying not to put anything there it's a little bit crowded it's an apartment sized grow tent it's tiny anyway enough about the tent so this is alocasia scalprum and then in the back over there is one of three pothos i have pothos pearls and jade now this, I'm honestly thinking about changing where in this apartment I keep this plant because I'm a little bored with it. It's, it's just okay. Um, number one, I'm just not that much of a pothos person. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really, I don't really care that much about them. I know that sounds terrible, but it's how I feel. Like I used to love this one because I just thought the specs were, were like exciting and a lot of fun, but I think I'm bored with it now and also it's really taking up premium real estate here just because like this is a great spot it's like five feet away from the south window so it's put it's you know the epitome of bright light that's indirect but with a couple of hours of direct sun a day it's the perfect growing spot in the house to me everything that's here thrives and does really well so I'm kind of thinking that maybe I should be putting something else in the, in this spot and not this guy because yeah i don't really care about it sorry oh my god and then over here this is my anthurium 
Warroquianum Esmeralda. So it's the Queen Anthurium, Anthurium Warroquianum, but this is a, a type that is, Esmeralda is a bit lighter green than the regular, the other queen. So it's like the dark queen and the green queen. So I have both. The dark queen is in my grow tent, but this one is out here and it's doing okay, actually, you know. These plants have a reputation for being super fussy and like needing really, really high humidity. But of course, this apartment is open plan, so it's quite difficult to maintain high humidity here no matter what, unless it's humid outside, which in the summertime in New York, humidity is high, but I'm running the AC, so that drops it. So you just, plants in here are almost never going to have great humidity, and they just have to deal, to be honest. Like today, let's see. Today's a pretty good day, and the humidity right now is 26. That's just how it goes. Most people are growing these in 60 and higher, but they anthuriums will adapt to the environment. You just have to be willing to accept that the leaves they came with are going to get ugly, possibly. Some won't. Some will just bounce. Some will adapt just fine. But some of them, the leaves will suffer and... You will have to pot it properly in the right media to deal with the environment and then water it a lot more than you otherwise would. Like, some people keep these in Lechuza Pond or, you know, semi-hydro and self-watering, which I think helps with maintaining a moist medium. But for some reason, I don't, I don't know why I'm just not a pond person. I know I've never tried it, but I'm just one of those people who's stubborn about things like that and... I just want to grow in. I just don't want to grow in pond, so I'm not growing in pond. But anyway, this one, <laughs> I got it. Ugh, it's been around for a while. This is its second winter in my apartment. So it's probably like a year and change. A year, not quite a year and a half, almost. Maybe like 18 months ago. And it, it came with so many, like stunning, with like five or six leaves. Beautiful plant. Every last one, slowly but surely, they all shriveled up collapsed in you know in on itself and the leaves shriveled up and and died this is this is i think one of the last original leaves this might not even be an original this might be one that grew in this environment but basically after it got rid of all those leaves it was down to like just this last one here it then created it then grew it then developed a second growth point over here so this is the original plant and then this new growth point came out and from that new growth point i've since had three leaves that it's holding on to that all seem to be doing quite well these two came out in better weather than this this is the first winter leaf but look it's fine you know it, it's it's doing really well i think the key here has been giving it enough light so that I can water it often. So it's potted in mostly tree fern. I think there's some perlite or some pumice in there, but it's mostly tree fern, which for me is this is the key with anthuriums. Like usually if the mix that they're in has a lot of tree fern, in my environment anyway, they tend to do really, really well. Like the roots are really happy and they grow really well in that stuff. So I potted it in tree fern and it's doing really well. I tend to water this one maybe like two or three times a week, maybe more. It, it depends on the season. It de I just, I look at the pot, I see what it's doing. And if it looks like it doesn't, if I don't see condensation, I will water it. The number one thing with Queen Anthurium is they just, they can't dry out. Honestly, I could probably water this every day, just based on where it's located and how much sun there is here. I could probably water it every day and it would be fine. It would be absolutely, it wouldn't be overwatered. And it will grow fine. So I might try to up my watering game and see if that, you know, see what that does. You know, I like experimenting with these, actually. And then down here is my oxalis. Now, this is a plant that is not happy with this afternoon's weather. It was, it's cold outside, but because of the greenhouse effect from the window and the direct sunlight, it gets very, very hot in here in the first half of the day. So I think it was about 100 degrees in here, which Oxalis was not too fond of. And the so that's why all the 
you know that's why all the flowers are shut but it's they'll open up in a couple of hours they're starting to open up now and then they'll shut again for bedtime probably tonight this this plant likes very very bright light and a lot a lot of water so that's what i do i keep it here because it is probably where it needs to be from a brightness perspective i just i wish i could move it out of those direct sun rays i think it would be it would do even better but honestly it does it grows fine i do need to trim off there's a lot of maintenance with this thing because it just like the leaves and the turnover of the the flowers and and the leaves is crazy it's like every day this is in my opinion a bit of a messy plant to own sort of similar to a maranta in terms of the endless flowers and leaves i just realized i skipped one sorry darling my hoya croniana croniana yeah this again you've seen i i only have three hoyas this is the third one what an easy beautiful plant so easy to grow right like i'm i'm still not a hoya person to be honest I like it, but I am still going to be anthuriums forever. But it is doing quite well. It's got a ton of peduncles at the moment. It did, I think it flowered. I think it had one flower. That's the first time it's flowered here, which has since fallen off. But it's got some other stuff going on. There's, there's, a, there, there's a party happening here. And, you know, there are a few, there are a few all over the plant. So I think... It's going to be, um, it's going to be flowering quite a bit soon, or it is currently flowering. There'll be quite a few flowers to look at soon. Um, this is in a tiny pot, which, and I water it all the time. When I say I water it all the time, I mean I water it all, I water it a lot. And I just, I let, there's like a tiny mini reservoir in the bottom. So the roots from the pot are actually growing out into that tiny mini reservoir because I heard Hoya roots like the added moisture so that's what I'm doing with this one okay I'm back where were we okay so I'm gonna go in here now and all the plants are clustered in quite tightly so I have to pull them out gently so we'll start with back here this is an Anthurium Magnificum Verde. It's just a weird, <laughs> it's just a weird Anthurium. I've, this is one that when it was in my grow tent was producing actually stunning leaves, very easy grower. But then I moved it out and I think I don't, I did not have the watering right. I think I left it to dry too much. Temperatures dropped enough to turn on the, the heating. Weird. Okay, yeah, I think I let it dry too much. So it's just, I don't know. It's a funny one. It just, it gets these holes and it just looks weird to me. This leaf obviously looks better than this one. So hopefully we've kind of figured things out. I don't know. It's not the fastest of growers. It's working on a new leaf. But the thing is, I repotted it. And when I repotted it, all the old roots that were there before, I don't know if you can see, all the old roots that were there before basically rotted. I didn't I didn't bother to unpot it because while the old roots were rotting simultaneously, it was putting out new, fresh, beautiful roots. So obviously it likes the new the tree fern that I've potted it in and it likes its position. I think it probably just needs to regrow the root ball to support the leaves that it has before it puts out new ones. I'm guessing that come summer it's going to be putting out loads and loads of new leaves i'm thinking of wrapping the stem as well with some sustra just to give it a bit more support and see if that helps but you know it's basically a work in progress magnificum verde and then next to that we have this guy which is an anthurium regale ex luxuriant so this one used to be in my bedroom and it got too big for the space, got too big for those shelves, so I had to pull it out. I think it's just adjusting to being out here in the living room. I also repotted it when I adjust when I brought it out. So it is working on some new roots. I potted it up like quite a bit, like I put it into a massive pot because I was having to water it basically almost every day. 
And so even though repotting it slowed down the growth, like I probably slowed it by two months growth wise, but I think it will be worth it because it will just stay in this pot for a while and I'll just keep stacking whatever I need on top for it to grow. The challenge now is just, you know, watering it, but not too much because the substrate now, now holds more water than it used to, but it's also a plant that likes to be watered a lot. So I just have to sort of figure out the balance. Um, I think I'm doing okay because I can see the roots already um, coming through. So it's working It's working hard. It's busy growing lots and lots of roots. has four leaves at the moment. It is the oldest ones that are showing some wear and tear, which is also how I know that it's fine. Um, and yeah, it's got an, it's working on another leaf, but I'm guessing it's that sort of on hold while the roots grow. The next leaf, I'm guessing, is going to be pretty big once it starts upsizing because the the parent regale has huge leaves and i feel like luxuriance hybrids tend to be quite large as well <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how big this gets it's a bit of plant tetris <gasps> oh, i can't believe i just did that well I just had an accident with the <laughs> with my philodendron majestic i was trying to pull it out by the moss pole and the whole thing came off i think i've actually destroyed some of the plant's roots i'm going to have to repot it so basically i don't this pot is not appropriate for this plant so i'm gonna have to repot it into something that can actually hold it but anyway this is a philodendron majestic look how tiny it is this is actually a new plant. I literally just um, unboxed this like a couple days ago and I just made this moss pole. So that's usually I can pick my moss pole plants up without the, the pot leaving, <laughs> leaving the ground, but not the case this time. So yeah, I'm kind of annoyed with myself, but what are you going to do? I'll figure it out. Put it to the side. Here's an example of what I was trying to do, you know. And actually being able to do it usually i can hold all my moss pole plants just by the pole and i don't have to worry about the the soil coming off but i guess they're all rooted and so and that one wasn't anyway this is my philodendron glorious it's it needs water it's thirsty like you can tell because it's like kind of drooping this um this guy has had spider mites so many times i don't know about other people but i feel like my velvet anthuriums get spider mites a lot anyway it doesn't have spider mites right now i don't think i think it's recovered from that um oh well maybe not and i maybe might have to treat it for spider mites if it has any because i'm starting to see this is new this wasn't here a couple days ago so it seems like there might be some more spider mites afoot but this is a really easy plant super easy to care for except for all the flipping is it, it might not be spider mites. It might be extra floral nectaries. I don't know. It's something. Anyway, this is a super easy plant to care for. It just, it grows like a weed. It's crazy. I have a few of these hybrids. So Majestic, which I just showed you, this one. I also have this Philodendron Splendid. This one also desperately needs water. I guess I'm slacking on my watering. Anyway, I don't think I'm slacking. I think it just was really hot in here today and they all got super dehydrated. So I'm going to have to water them more than I thought I would because I feel like I just watered this one not that long ago. I left this in a propagation vessel for ages. I only just potted it up. It hasn't attached to the pole yet, but it will. I do need to be better about watering it though. Give it a chance to thrive. Then, next to that guy, let's see. So where was I? Oh, okay. I just recently brought this one from my bedroom to live out here. Oh, thirsty already. This is Anthurium Bessiae F X Crystallinum. It's been on the bookshelf in my bedroom, but the light in there is just not as good as it should be. And this plant is, <laughs> it's a beast. Look at it. Look at the roots. It's just, it grows and grows and grows. So... This was actually quite a small plant when I got it and the rate of growth tells me that it's going to be massive. I mean, it's a hybrid anyway. What else do you expect? I just think it's going to end up being too big for that space. 
and it'll probably do better, it'll probably thrive more out here. And also, I'm just trying to build in a bit more visual interest here. So I feel like this is a good candidate because given the chance, I do think the leaves will be very interesting when they're not like, you know, stretching excessively for light, when they have a chance to really like show their true characteristics. So let's see what it does out here. Even though it's full of roots, I'm not going to repot it yet because I don't want to set it back. So I probably will give this one like a pot extender, give it some more room to work with, even though the roots are already starting to come out the bottom. But I just kind of want it to get adjusted to being out here before I start repotting it or anything like that. And when, look, it's got an inflow. This is this this is the first inflorescence. This was a leaf that I broke off by accident and I cried. I'm not ashamed to admit I cried. But this is its first inflow. I'll, I'll chop it off because, you know, eventually I'll, why, I'm not going to pollinate it. So And then next up is another anthurium. I mean, I'm sorry, how cute is the leaf on this guy? This is Anthurium papillulaninum x blue velvet, which blue velvet is a type of magnificum. This plant, oh, I love it so much. This is another one that I had in a location where it wasn't really getting what it needed so it was deteriorating I had to chop off some of the other leaves and so now I'm kind of rehabbing it out here in the brightest of light which I think is quite happy with like the roots are already they're already doing what they need to do so I'm I'm not too concerned about this guy it's quite a vigorous grow it's quite a strong plant so I'm sure once it adjusts to its new environment it will start producing nice big leaves again I'm just enjoying this leaf in the meantime anyway. I think it's super cute just poking out, you know, from all the masses because I have so much going on here. It's really, I think it's really quite adorable just seeing this tiny thing. Look at it. Look at the colors. It's a banger. Stunning. Another cutie, this is Begonia Black Magic. At least that's what it was sold to me as, Begonia Black Magic. This, I've never had a Begonia before. So I really don't know anything about how they grow. I'm just, I'm sort of treating it like an anthurium, which is crazy. I'm assuming maybe good light, but not too much. So I have it quite far back because I feel like, you know, the leaves are thin. So I'm assuming they'll burn. But it's cute though, right? It's adorable. Maybe this will be the plant that will turn me into a begonia girl. Who knows? This one is a philodendron black cardinal. I've had this one for quite a long time as well. I think I might have had it for as long as the Prince of Orange, or maybe I bought it right after. I'm not sure, but similar type of plant, similar type of growth habit. I just recently gave it this stake for some support, but I really don't like the way it looks. I think it's super ugly with the steak it was so cute before with just all the leaves so i am thinking my current plan is i'm probably going to air layer this guy so i'm going to wrap the nodes with like potting media of some sort to encourage roots and then once it roots in the new pot i'm gonna chop it and then i'll replant that'll create obviously an extra new plant which i'll repot into the soil with all the others it's either that or i just chop the whole thing which seems quite risky to do considering how long i've been growing this plant so i think air layering is the way to go um i may also very well just keep only the top bit of the new plant and not keep the rest i haven't really decided all i know is i don't want this to climb i think it looks ugly like that i like it when it's shorter so that's this guy in the back over there I have a philodendron micans this is my philodendron micans I need to I need to do some work um, the vines are growing off the pole this poor micans my one of my first philodendrons massively neglected lesser but started her as a tiny two inch pot back when these were impossible to get your hands on she came from 
think she came from Gabriella Plants. So she was really teeny weeny, but here she is now. She's a big girl. She does need the pole. Needs water. It's kind of hydrophobic right now, but these once these are established, it can take so much drying out. But then again, you know, if I just watered it when it wanted it, it would be like I don't really, you know, I'm not too bothered because it's better to keep it under control. It's a bit, it's a bit much to manage. And I really, I don't want these to lose their velvetiness. So I really don't mind keeping them on sort of the smaller side. Let me water this bad boy. He needs it. And then I have this guy, which is my Philodendron SP Columbia. This is another one that was an import. And first I tried to let it climb and it wouldn't. Then I let it crawl and it crawled until it decided to climb. So it's kind of weird. It doesn't crawl. It doesn't climb. It sort of grows diagonally, which isn't a real thing. It's super annoying. I'm contemplating air layering this one too because I think the way this guy has grown it's gonna need a cut or some kind of support to hold it so maybe put some stakes in behind it to hold it up like this I don't know but it's very unsteady as is which makes me nervous when I water it because it's quite top heavy um, speaking of I'm gonna water it now because it's floppy this one takes quite a bit of water honestly it's quite demanding of water always dry or probably a really good candidate for self watering but again that's not my jam so she's gonna deal she's gonna deal okay so that concludes that part of the room and then we have in that corner that used to be what I called Calathea corner <laughs> back when I still had a bunch of Calatheas I used to have a Calathea orbifolia a Calathea wachetrixii um a lemon lime maranta and the red maranta all in that corner so all four of them were there because they had similar care i used to run a humidifier over there back when i was still fighting the fact that this space is completely open plan and almost impossible to humidify so i had a humidifier there and yeah i was just i used to stress about it a lot actually but you know i last year i decided to simplify and stop stressing myself out about things that i don't care that much about and the orbifolia, whenever it was healthy, was just so big that it's just not practical of a plant to have in this place because when you grow them really well, the leaves are like dinner plates. They're massive and it grows wider, not taller. So it's kind of a, it's either you have an unhealthy one that's not doing well, which stays compact, or you have one that's really healthy and it's massive, but it's taking over and there's no space for it. And I had other plants that was kind of getting more into also orbifolia just always had thrips so i excused it from the jungle earlier this year got rid of it and now the only calathea i have is calathea watset wixii so so this is my lemon lime maranta which i keep in that corner Honestly, the way I've fallen off caring for this plant is shocking. You can just tell when a plant no longer excites me because I just neglect. So this plant is heavily neglected. It's in a self-watering pot, but as you can see, the reservoir is empty. Like I am not doing, I am not doing what needs to be done. I'm not doing right by, I'm not doing right by poor lemon lime maranta. Shocking. So yep, I need to do a better job of caring for lemon lime maranta. I need to clean it up, water it, or, you know, the whole nine yards. Terrible. I may actually just give it a hard prune and just make it a smaller, more manageable plant because I'm just not that fast about having some huge vining maranta. I, I don't care that much anymore. I'm, I used to really love marantas, but I'm kind of off them a bit now. Tastes change, I guess. And then over here, this is, this is an Anthurium papillilaminum X. Ace of spades, X, Ace of spades, X papillilaminum, papillilaminum, 
Ace of Spades, ex Papi Lilaninum, AOS ex Papi, I don't know. I recently repotted this one, so like it's growing all its new roots, and it seems to be doing quite well. I took it out, it was in the grow tent, and so it grew all these leaves, these, these ones, and a couple more that I've taken off grew in my grow tent, so it had optimal conditions in there is pushing out new growth like crazy very happy but you see it's it's this is a seed this is i think still a seedling <laughs> it's gonna be big it's already big so i had to take it out because i just thought well where is it gonna live so i brought it out here this is the first leaf it grew in open air here as you can see there's a tear due to it adjusting to the conditions out here the lower humidity this is yellowing I'm not sure if it's just because there's less light. When I brought it out here, there was less light. I'm going to switch out that grow light to something a little more powerful, but I'm thinking maybe because there was less light, it needed to sacrifice some leaves. I know that it's perfectly happy because it's rooting beautifully, so that ain't it. Or maybe it's just the adjustment phase and it was always going to get rid of these leaves. Who knows? It's got another leaf on the way. The growth is a little bit slower because we're no longer in the tent and everything takes longer when the humidity is lower. It's working on an inflorescence here, annoyingly, which maybe is also why it's yellowing some of these leaves. I don't know. Anyway, I just try to keep up with water and fertilizer. It seems to seems to have taken to the new pot quite well. And yeah, I so basically I got rid of the Calithia or before they had to make room for what's going to be a big, big anthurium. And then this baddie, this beauty, is my Calathea Wasset Rixii. Now, this plant used to be enormous. I'll put a picture up so you can see what this plant used to look like. I've had it for, I think, three years now. I mean, it was huge. But it's one of those plants that doesn't really drop a lot of foliage. So the, some of the foliage is looking battered, dry, tatty, because, you know, it had been through several winters. And also during the summer, last year during the summer, when I traveled, the person who was watering the plants just couldn't keep up with it. So it definitely got quite neglected. But it was also just getting kind of big for the space. Now, instead of getting rid of it, <laughs> the way I got rid of the orbifolia, I decided to divide it. So I chopped the root ball. I think I threw out two thirds of the plant, two thirds of the root ball. But the, the leaves were, they were tatty and not worth keeping. So I had a third of the root ball left and I cut, and if you look here, you can see, I cut those plants down to the stumps one two um and here's a third three and then i put what was left i potted what was left of it in a self-watering pot because calathea is probably for me the exception to that rule right self-watering they just do better in self-watering pots to be honest so i potted it in a self-watering pot because the roots of the calathea want to be in water humid muggy so the roots, in two seconds flat, the roots grew into the reservoir. There you go. So this is like, it's not even, it hasn't even been in this pot very long, but instantly the roots grew into the reservoir and the plant was a lot happier. It put out one, two, yeah, it put out four new shoots. So these these all grew from like tiny like that. So it's, it's doing its thing. It's growing really well. The foliage is staying lush more easily. It does drink a lot of water. Like the fact that this reservoir is already empty, I feel like I just filled it not that long ago. So that's annoying, but it's a much easier way to keep the plant and keep it healthy because otherwise you're just going to be watering it all the time. And with my lifestyle, I water my anthuriums all the time. So that sounds hypocritical, but I just feel like with Calathea a little bit less predictable, like anthuriums 
those roots are very very they're just really resilient they're not as easy to damage but these are just the roots can be a little fine and finicky so i only use distilled water in the reservoir i've tried tap water with this doesn't work i've tried using the stuff that they use to treat fish tanks doesn't work i don't have reverse osmosis or i haven't tried demineral i don't know there i'm sure there's maybe one more thing i can try but for me distilled water is easiest especially because you know it's only one plant well this one and the maranta it's only two plants out of a hundred and something that take distilled water so i just do that um and whenever i travel people probably won't remember distilled water so it will suffer for that little period of time but other than that it's fine isn't it it's so cute right i just realized i showed all the plants on this side of the house except for the big guy himself the main character He's an icon, he's a legend, he is the moment. This is Monty Soko, <laughs> named so by my kids. Um, this Monstera is, this Monstera was purchased in 2020 as a small Plant. There were four small plants in a pot. I had to separate it and remove two so that there were only two vines in the pot because it's just impossible for a monstera to get all the nutrients it needs for the leaves to be huge when you have so many plants in the pot. Even this one should really only be one vine in this pot, but there are two. And so I'm planning to cut one of them. But as I was making plans to cut it, it started putting out a new leaf, which is really annoying. So now i don't know i just feel bad cutting it while it's putting out a new leaf so i'm just waiting for the new leaf to come in and harden off and look good and then i will work up the courage to chop it but i, I think it's dominating the entire area there it just doesn't look i don't know it just looks too wild it doesn't look as nice and i really want my other plants to get a chance to shine so i'm gonna cut it back a bit at least cut this one um, stem off so that I just have the one and I can kind of position it a bit differently and it'll stop blocking the TV It's just me and my monstera It's just me and my monstera And then I have a couple of pothos up there on my bookshelves a golden pothos and a jade pothos this corner of the room is kind of on the messy side honestly i call it anthurium alley and ficus folly i'm still trying to figure out how to style them properly so they don't annoy me looks wise and lots of them are still small and kind of in the growth stage so we're still they're still trying to figure themselves out so i'll pull them out and show you what plants live back there but that's what we have there so there's this guy anthurium radicans ex luxuriance this was also tiny when i got it and it was in my bedroom for a while it lived on the shelf and honestly it did quite well on the shelf but it just outgrew the space the glass shelves are kind of narrow in scope and it just it grows a bit all over the place so it outgrew the space and here it is this was the first luxuriance hybrid type plant I got and I you know I still like it but I don't know the way it grows is a bit blah I think it's kind of boring to be honest I do enjoy the emergent leaf color it's cute but I'm not wild about it I don't really know why I just I just don't care that much <laughs> It's got a bunch of inflorescences going on right now. It always has inflorescence, which is annoying because I think it's sterile, right? So it's like a waste of <laughs> a waste of space. But yeah, this is this guy just doing its thing.
And then this one is a Magnificum Ex Forgetii, which is quite, it's struggling. It's on the struggle bus. I think I'm going to repot it. I think it's, I think it's got a little bit of root rot. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to repot it on, in a couple of days and maybe think about where I'm positioning it. I left it in a location with not enough light for quite a long time and it really, really struggled and went downhill. It hasn't, just hasn't perked back up yet. So hopefully I can salvage it. We'll see. And this guy is a cross you really don't see that much. It's Anthurium clarinervium crossed with Anthurium forgetii. So it's got that teardrop forgetii shape. Looks like an alien, but the leaves are thick. Like it's much tougher than a forgetii, sort of like the best of both of those plants. So the gorgeousness of a forgetii, but the toughness of a clarinervium. It is a big drinker. Um, it is a big drinker, much like forgetii. But then again, if you forget to water it, it doesn't just expire like clarinervium. So it's, I don't know, it's an interesting cross of both. Uh, it's, this is the first inflorescence it gave me and it's working on a new leaf right now. I'm actually, this is one of my favorite plants. I just like how weird, wacky and, and wonderful it is. We'll see. It, I think it does need a bit of support around the stem. So I'm going to put some more sustrate here just to kind of help it grow more roots and be even stronger. But it's, it's doing well. It's doing really well. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of those plants that like in years to come, I'll look at it and just be like, wow, because it's really, it's really special. It's gorgeous. And then next to that, I have this Anthurium King of Spades. Now this one was in my bedroom on the shelf, a little bit neglected. It's kind of, it's quite a young King of Spades. So it's just kind of, it's just figuring itself out. I've moved it out here and it's doing very well. It's roots, has a lot of roots. They're getting fatter and thicker. I think it might be due for a repot or a change of sustrate because it's been in this pot for a while and I think it's I think it was in what I used to pot it in before I think it was in a lot of aroid mix so I think I'm going to either give it some support up here or I might repot it now I won't repot it I don't want to set it back I think I'll give it some support up here and see how it does with that but these leaves are you know they're quite special they're tough as well Hopefully it does well out here in the living room. And then we have this guy, which is a seedling, but it's it's starting to take off. Um, Anthurium luxuriens, Tezula red, Tezula red crystallinum crossed with luxuriens. So the new leaf comes in red, red, red. And it sort of hardens off to this kind of greenish, you know, almost purplish color. It's very, very pretty. I think I repotted this not long, maybe like two weeks ago, I repotted this from a tiny pot into this one and it immediately just started putting out these big fat, <laughs> these big fat roots that tell me that it's, it's doing well. So I think it likes these air pots and this one's doing well. It's a cutie. I've been doing this so long that the light is going. Ficus umbellata and ficus audrey. These guys are where I'm saying ficus folly, folly because I'm growing two trees in the corner of my living room, in the darkest corner of my living room, powered only by a Soltec Vita grow light. So that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of the gist of what's happening down there. Um, this ficus umbellata is a, a favorite. I love her. Of course, every time I repot her, she drops leaves. So, you know, she's also a spider mite magnet, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to give her up. I just, I just, I find her to be utterly charming. So I'm due to repot her. Probably the next time I show you, she'll be a ficus stick. 
And then this is Ficus Audrey. This was also like like that one, also a four inch pot when I got it, but it was growing funny, growing wonky, competing with this guy for light. So I chopped it because I just thought, well, it wasn't growing. I chopped it over here. It wasn't growing in the direction I wanted it to. And it immediately put out like a million tiny growth points, which is annoying. So this one is an offshoot. This is the continuation. And then all down here, it's got a ton of growth points. So I just... I'm trying to feed it to keep up with the growth. It also desperately, desperately needs a repot. So I don't think it will grow well or more until I repot it. So I'll probably do that quite soon. Yep. And then there's this guy, which is an Anthurium. Anthurium cupulis pathum. This one needs a pruning and it just needs sorting in general. It's tattered because my kids, it's in a high traffic area and endless games of, you know, indoor basketball, throwing darts, ping pong, all kinds of things have battered the leaves. But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give the kids a hard time. It's their house and the plants are just taking it over. So this is another plant that is literally a unit okay it grows like a weed but i don't really have the space for it let's be honest so i'll have to think of a practical solution to control the petioles if it's going to stay otherwise it, it will have to go at some point they're just ridiculous they're all over the place what do you even do with this it's like a bouquet a bouquet of cupolis pathum ridiculous plant there's also a philodendron pastazanum in the corner there that I imported like two, three years ago that has just never done well. It's just constantly one, it just constantly has one foot in the grave. I was just looking at it right now and honestly, I think I'm going to call it a day with that plant because it's doing my head in. It's taking too long to bounce back and honestly, I just could be using the space for other plants that need it. So yeah i'm probably gonna excuse that one from my life shortly why bother showing it there's a very old yellowing just limp struggle bus pastazanum back there and then these are philodendron gloriosum propagations i just potted them up um not long ago actually a few days ago so yeah this one, I think this one is super cute. Might be the one I end up keeping. And then this one, yeah. There's a lot going on here, but anyway. They seem to have done okay. They seem to have taken to the repot fine. So they're still growing. I'll keep an eye. This one has, look, this one has new root growth, so I know it's doing fine. I think there are like three or four cuttings in this one, so it's going to be... It's going to be a bushy old plant. This one, I don't know. Maybe this will replace the pastazan in that corner. Or who knows? Anyway, these are my gloriosum cuttings. That's it for all the plants I have in my living room. But I also wanted to show you the plants that are in my grow tent. Now, my grow tent is in my kids' playroom. It's shoved in a corner behind the piano. It's just There just isn't a lot of space when you only have two bedrooms and you know so I can't really be taking it over it's kind of it's quite a small grow tent it's about three quarters of my height maybe um and quite narrow definitely apartment size I think it's the smallest one that the company makes I can't remember who makes it I'll I'll pop the details down below I'll put them in the description but I use that grow tent for acclimating imports and that's it right I, I just put imports in there however um at the moment in there, I have a queen and through. Well, I'll show you. Why don't I just show you instead of telling you what I have in the grow tent? Number one, this is an Anthurium Warroquianum X Serenoi. This plant is the most difficult thing I've ever grown in my life. It's crazy. I tried to acclimate it out here in open air and look what happened. Crispy, crunchy, crazy. 
This is the first, I then moved it into my grow tent. So it's now growing a new leaf. But look, even in the tent, the new leaf is like really, I think, I don't know if maybe I just don't have enough. Maybe it needs a bigger pot so it can draw more water all the time. This is one that may end up in self-watering because it seems like even with the humidity of the grow tent, it's still struggling. So, and then I also have, I also have this philodendron lupinum. This was an import that I simply haven't bothered to put on a pole or pot up. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Why haven't I done it? So I'll probably pot it up soon. I do not know how it's going to adjust to life on the outside. It's been in a cup of water in my grow tent forever. It, that, these roots might just expire, but what can you do? Got to give it a try. And then I also have this Alocasia heterophylla dragon's breath. So remember earlier when I said all my Alocasias basically got a fungal infection, this one was my absolute favorite and it was an incredible plant i'll put a picture up so you can see what it used to look like it was stunning but then it got fungal i lost the main plant itself but i harvested a ton of corms and so i potted the corms up some of them i think i potted up like three two or three corms in here two or three and i stuck it in the grow tent because i wanted to make sure i gave it the best chance at success and here it is just doing what it do doing what alocasias like to do so it's it's in this is a mix this is a mix of tree fern fiber with a little cocoa peat or maybe it's just tree fern i don't know tree fern with a little cocoa core and some perlite and it's just going going crazy really uh, the roots are in the reservoir similar to calathea right those roots are are moist and the plant is super happy so here she is um probably going to graduate from the grow tent soon because she gets quite big and I don't have, I can't just keep it in there permanently. Like there's literally no space for that. So I'm hoping it will be strong enough to transition to the outside shortly. And then this is my Anthurium waterberryanum. This is also a plant that I tried to grow in open air and it wasn't having it. So I stuck it back in my grow tent. After numerous, um, problems and start and stop i repotted it into tree fern fiber and it's it's rooted beautifully it's doing really well um it does have a portion of the trunk that i need to cover but this was the first leaf once i put it back in the once i put it into tree fern fiber this was the first leaf so happy and then this is the latest leaf She's a fat one. <laughs> Still working on this leaf. It's not done growing yet. And I'm really pleased with this plant because I bought it as a seedling. So I've had it for a long time and it's not easy to grow. It's a bit of a difficult one. I'm not sure this plant can thrive in open air. I can't wait till the leaf is done hardening off and I can see her in all her glory. And last but not least... This plant started life um, as an imported seedling and it's always, it's just stayed in my grow tent the whole time. And now it's massive. I don't know, I think it's been 18 months, maybe 12, 18 months. I'm not sure, but it, it's doing incredibly well in there. I think I need to give it a, a bigger pot um, just to allow, look at the roots. So I think it does need a much bigger pot, um, to allow the roots to grow, but also I need to cover the stem as well. So I guess I just need to have a massive repot. These yellow leaves happened when I went on a trip and my kids, my daughter forgot to water it. So I went without water for 10 days, which for the queen and three is a huge no, no. So I've just been trying to, you know, <laughs> nurse it back to good health it's fine it's it's also just kicked up an inflow it's working on another one it's a it's a very busy plant but there isn't really enough room in my grow tent so i'm not really sure what i'm gonna do when the time comes to kick this guy out so i just don't know where 
I just don't know if it could cope out here. In, I mean, it could cope out here in the living room, but I probably will lose all the foliage. So, and I don't know if my heart's ready for that, to, to lose all the foliage and start again. That'd be really annoying, but that's probably what it's going to have to be, if I'm being honest, because these get really, really massive, and there just isn't going to be the space for it in inside the tent. I hope you've enjoyed checking me and my plants out. I will show the ones in my bedroom another day because look how long it took to show just the ones in the living room we started when it was bright out and now it's basically almost twilight or evening do we say twilight in america anyway it's almost evening so i've been doing this i've been at it for hours <laughs> enough is enough um so yeah i hope you've enjoyed seeing all the plants and i will show the bedroom ones at some other time please be sure to leave me a comment below letting me know which plant you enjoyed seeing um and if you enjoyed seeing the tour please subscribe i have lots more exciting content coming up give me a thumbs up and i'll see you the next time